Hi and welcome back. In this video we'll learn a few more letters from the Greek alphabet uh, and these are letters that are going to be familiar to us if we remember some of our math and science. A lot of Greek letters don't look like their English counterpart but some of those are actually familiar to us from math or the sciences. Here's the whole alphabet again, the Greek alphabet. And uh, the letters in yellow are the ones that we've already learned. Alpha, beta, delta, epsilon, iota, kappa, mu, omicron, tau, and upsilon. The ones in green are the six letters that we're going to be learning about in this video. The first of these is gamma. Uh, this is used for many things in the sciences, uh, including gamma radiation. And the shape in the lower case looks a little bit like two blades of grass um, coming up from one root. The tail dips below the line. Uh, you could also imagine it as a, a really uh, stylized Y maybe. Um, but if you think of it as two blades of grass, that'll help you remember the G sound that it makes. Uh, the uppercase gamma uh, really doesn't look like any English letter uh, it looks a bit like a T, except one of the arms at the top is chopped off. Um, but uh, you can remember uh, that this makes the G sound, always a hard G as in grass, and never a soft G as in gem. There are a couple of oddities about the letter gamma. Uh, one is that when two gammas appear together, their sound changes. Uh, the shape looks a little bit more uh, a little bit like more great blades of grass springing up, so it must be spring. And uh, it's that NG sound, like in spring, that two gammas make when they come together. Uh, not like NG in angel, it's always the ng sound, uh, like the NG at the end of spring. Another combination that changes the sound of gamma is gamma with a kappa after it. Uh, now, it's pretty hard to pronounce a hard g and k together, isn't it? G -k. Uh, and so the Greeks, too, uh, would change the sound of the gamma to more an ng sound, uh, like the n and k in ankle. So when you have gamma followed by kappa, uh, sounds like an unk, uh, sound like in ankle. The next letter we're going to look at today is the letter theta. Again, this is used for several things, uh, one of which is theta waves, which are one frequency of brain activity. The shape in the lowercase looks a bit like a thumb, doesn't it? A sort of oblong with a line through the middle that could be the base of the thumbnail. Uh, the uppercase looks a bit more round with a floating crossbar that doesn't touch either side. Uh, but it makes this TH sound like thumb. It never makes the uh, voiced TH like in the or though. It's always voiceless. Uh, in other words, there's, there's nothing coming from your voice box. It's just a th sound like in thumb. The letter P is used in math, of course. Uh, it's used to represent the number 3.1415, etc. Uh, and the name is often pronounced when we learn it there like pi, uh, but the name of the Greek letter should ac actually be pronounced P. The shape uh, looks a little bit in the lowercase like a, a path leading to the horizon, doesn't it? two lines converging a little bit on a horizontal line that could represent the horizon. Uh, and so uh, we can connect the lowercase letter p with the word path to help us remember its uh, sound. The uppercase is taller and more square but still has the, the two uprights with a crossbar. The sound again is just like our English p uh, and it never makes a soft ph. It's always the p sound of path. The letter lambda uh, 
sometimes represents the half-life of radioactive materials. Uh, lambda is a, a sign for wavelength in physics. Um, and uh, a lambda function in programming is an anonymous function. So there, there are a lot of different uh, places where lambda shows up in English. Uh, the shape looks, in the lowercase, a little bit like an upside-down lobster. If you have the, the tail sticking up in the air and two arms with claws sticking down, and that might help you remember that uh, this uh, letter lambda, even though it doesn't look much like an L, makes the L sound. The uppercase of lambda uh, looks like an upside down V. Now, don't confuse it with alpha, because alpha has the crossbar, like in our capital A. And also don't confuse it with delta, which is the triangle. Uh, because it uh, has a, a closed bottom. Uh, the capital lambda doesn't have a closed bottom and it doesn't have a crossbar. It's just the upside down V. And both of these forms make a sound like the English L as in lobster. The letter C uh, is often used as a symbol for psychology. Uh, and this is because the Greek word psyche from which we get the word psyche, starts with the letter P. The shape of the lowercase uh, might look a bit like an upside down umbrella. And so we can connect uh, the letter P with the word words upside down. Uh, and that helps us because uh, the letter P makes the combination of the P and S sound uh, that we get in upside down. Ps. The uh, uppercase letter P uh, looks much like the lowercase, just a little bit more squared off. And where the vertical stroke of the lowercase P uh, continues below the line, the uppercase P stands all above the line. Uh, now, uh, the P is never silent like in psychology. It's always pronounced like in upside down. And this can be a, a tricky combination for English speakers to pronounce at the beginning of a word. Uh, so you might need to practice this a, a little bit uh, to s say ps, ps, and then say things like psuke. Uh, but uh, it's important to distinguish the ps from the simple s sound that sigma makes. Omega is the last letter of the whole Greek alphabet. And this might be familiar to us from theology, where we talk about Jesus as the Alpha and Omega. It also might be familiar from studying electricity, where it re represents an ohm, which is a unit of resistance. The shape of the lowercase looks like a curvy W. Now, this was originally a shorthand for two O's. Um, and it might also look a bit like the waves on the ocean and uh, connecting uh, the lowercase omega to ocean uh, can help us to remember that it makes that long O sound. Uh, it never makes the short O sound as in log, aw. That's always the omicron. It always makes the O sound. The capital omega uh, is probably a familiar shape. Uh, hard to connect it much with the lowercase omega uh, unless you think that maybe the the middle bump of the lowercase omega has blown up like a balloon uh, and we get the the uh, uppercase uh, but you can remember that both of those uh, both the lowercase and uppercase make an o sound like an ocean now we can spell even more uh, English words using Greek letters. And remember, we're talking about making the English sounds with the Greek letters that make those sounds, not finding Greek equivalents for each letter. So to spell the word thing, we would use theta for the th, iota for the e uh, vowel, and then for the ng at the end, we would put two gammas. And so theta, iota, gamma, gamma, sounds like thing. The word call, we might uh, spell in Greek letters with a kappa, 
an alpha and a lambda at the end, which would sound like call. And uh, the English word lept, we could pronounce, uh, we could uh, write in Greek letters with lambda, epsilon, p, and tau. And the word pet, we could pronounce, uh, we could write with p, epsilon, tau. Once again, you can find out more about the Greek alphabet and pronunciation in uh, a couple more videos and also in Mounts' chapter 2.